What's up guys, welcome to your 30th biology tutorial and in this video I want to talk to you guys about autotrophs and heterotrophs. Now of course we already know that all organisms, all living things on earth need food for energy. However, what biologists did is they categorized the different types of organisms based on how they obtain their food. So of course we get food different than um, how plants for example get food. So an autotroph would be like a plant and of course plants get food through a process called photosynthesis and we're going to be talking about this later on but it's not even that specific. Autotrophs are just organisms, organisms that make their own food. And of course a heterotroph would be the opposite of that. Heterotrophs, me and you, we just can't, you know, get energy from the sun and, you know, make our own food. Would be nice, but we eat other organisms. So this would pretty much be any animal. So of course, one more time. What biologists did is they categorized organisms based on how they obtain their food. They categorize them into two different categories, autotrophs, and these would be things like plants and algae that make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. And, uh, you know, me, my dog, all other animals, we eat other organisms. And by organisms, I mean other plants, other animals. That's how we obtain our food as a source of energy. So now that, you know, I cover that, let me go ahead and detail and discuss photo synthesis. How come every word in biology is like 80 years long? Anyways, so here is the quick, you know, one-two of photosynthesis. Say that we have a plant right here and it's getting pretty hungry and needs some energy. It needs to create its own food. Well, the ingredients needed for photosynthesis are pretty simple, but let me go ahead and draw them out. The first ingredient needed is energy from the sun. So let me just go ahead and put an E right there. The second ingredient needed is carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide is of course a molecule in whenever a plant needs carbon dioxide it just finds it in the air, in the environment. And the last ingredient it needs is water. Now water is usually stored in the ground and that's why you know plants have roots to get that. But sometimes when it's really dry out then it can actually wait for it to rain. And that's of course why it dies if it doesn't rain for a long amount of time. But basically, those are the three ingredients needed for photosynthesis. Energy from the sun, carbon dioxide, and water from the ground. Now what happens during this process is, whenever it obtains the water molecule from the ground, your plant uses the hydrogen from it, but the oxygen it doesn't really need. So that's why it gives off the oxygen whenever it breaks up this water molecule. So gives off oxygen. That's why people say that plants give off oxygen and humans give off carbon dioxide. We'll talk about why humans give off carbon dioxide later on. But for right now, this is the really, really quick and basic summary of photosynthesis. In order for a plant to make food, it needs energy from the sun, carbon dioxide, and water from either the rain, or if it rained already, it's in the ground. And whenever it obtains that water molecule to break apart, it gives off oxygen because it's mostly concerned with the hydrogen. Now, of course, humans and animals, they don't go through photosynthesis. Me and you and my dog, we can't just turn the sun into food. It would be nice, but you know, it doesn't happen. Instead, we use a process called, let me change my color here, cellular respiration. Now, what happens in cellular respiration is humans use oxygen to break up food. Now, I already talked to you guys a little bit about this process later on, I mean earlier on, but basically whenever we use oxygen, and of course we breathe oxygen from the environment to break up food, what happens is this food releases energy and it stores it in a molecule in our cells called ATP. Now if you guys don't understand what ATP is, watch my last video, but basically ATP gives the cells energies or energy that they can use and whenever your cell uses energy so I'll just go ahead and write this would be of course the cell using energy it gives off a byproduct of carbon dioxide and water and let me go draw my water is blue and water 
which of course is H2O. So of course cellular respiration is the process that we go through to obtain energy from food and this food would be plants or animals or any other organisms that we consume or eat. So whenever we turn that food into ATP, the process of you know giving energy or cells creating energy gives off CO2, which is carbon dioxide, and water. So that's why we say that human beings, whenever they, you know, they pretty much give off carbon dioxide and plants give off oxygen. Now, take a note of this. In order for plants to create food, they need carbon dioxide, which humans and animals give off. And in order for animals to make food, they need oxygen, which is a byproduct of photosynthesis. So as you can see, it's pretty cool that it's nice and balanced. And in the next story, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the exact chemical formula of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. And you guys are going to see how perfect and how awesome and balanced life is here on Earth.